talking about chapter 10 um, James crawled uh, through the hole and then he came into the core he saw a strange man who had a white face um, so this looks like uh, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, here chapter eleven. James' large, frightened eyes travel slowly around the room. The creature, some sitting on a chair, others reclining on a sofa, or all, all watching him intently. Creature, no word the insect. An insect is usually something rather small. Is it not? A uh, grasshopper, for example, is an insect. So, what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as a dog? Mm. As large as a large dog. You could hardly call that an insect, could you? There was an old green grasshopper as large as a large dog sitting on a stool directly circled the room from James now. And next to the old green grasshopper, there was an enormous spider. And next to the spider, there was a giant light bug with its nine black spots on a scarlet shell. Each of these three was scratching upon a magnificent chair. On a sofa nearby, is reclining comfortably in tall of the potions. Um, there was a sand feed and an earthworm, and on the floor of in the far corner, there was something thick and white that looked as though it might be a silkworm, but it was sleeping soundly, and nobody was paying any attention to it. Every one of these creatures was at least as big as James himself, and in the strange ignition light that shone down from somewhere in the ceiling, they were absolutely terrifying to behold. I am hungry, the spider announced suddenly, staring hard at James. I am famished, the old Ringa Suffer said. So am I, the ladybug cried. The centipede sat up a little straight and on the sofa. Everyone's famished, he said. We need food. Four pairs of round, black glass eyes were all fixed up on James. The centipede made a wriggling movement with his body as though he were about to glide off the sofa, but he didn't. There was a long pause. And a long silence. The spider, who happened to be a female spider, opened her mouth and ran a long black tongue delicately over her lips. Aren't you hungry? she asked suddenly, leaning forward and addressing herself to James. For James was a bag up against a far wall, and a shivering stood with a bright and much too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you, the old green grass? Coffer asked. You look positively ill. He looks as though he's going to faint any second. The scientist said, Oh, my goodness, the fool thing, the ladybug cried. I do believe he thinks it's him that we are wanting to eat. There was a roar of laughter from all sides. Oh dear, oh dear, they said, but an awful thought, and uh, you mustn't be frightened, the ladybug said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now, so didn't you know of that? You are one of the crew. We are all in the same boat, and we've been waiting for you all day long. The old green grass officer said, we thought you were... Never going to turn up, I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy, cheer up, the centipede said. And meanwhile, I wish you to come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them all up by myself. Oh, centipede, pudding. Boots? 
very funny. Anyway, so quite interesting. Um, a little bit, uh, yes, an interesting story in it. Big insects in the giant peach. Chapter 11 James met large insects. Grasshopper, child grasshopper, a light ball. A centipede, a spider. Uh, when James met them, uh, one of them said, uh, I'm starving. And then the other said, I'm punished. Uh, James uh, was afraid of uh, that they um, would eat him because uh, he was young and then uh, the big insects uh, might be um, powerful, might have been powerful. Uh, but then um, the big grasshoppers told James they would not eat James. Uh, they welcomed James. Uh, in fact, they waited uh, uh, for James. Uh, what do are they going to eat? Okay. Now, chapter 12. James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable, so he crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and knelt down beside him. Thank you so much. Santa Peter said, You are very kind. You have a lot of roots. Here's murmured, I have a lot of legs. The Santa Peter answered proudly, and a lot of feet. One hundred to be exact. There he goes again. The earth worms cried speaking for the first time. He simply cannot. Stop telling lies about his legs. Uh, he doesn't have anything like a hundred of them. He's only got forty-two. The trouble is that most people don't bother so to count them. They just take his word. And anyway, there is nothing marvelous, you know. Sent feet about having a lot of legs. Poor fellow, the centipede said, whispering in James' seat. He's blind. He can't see how splendid I look, in my opinion, the earth worm said. The really marvelous thing is to have no legs all at all and to be able to walk just the same. You call that walking? cried the centipede. You are a slitherer. That's all you are. You just slither along. I glide, said the earth one prudently. You are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. I'm not a slimy beast, the earth one said. I'm a useful and much loved creature as can a gardener you like. And as for you, I'm a pest, the centipede announced. Grinning broadly and looking round the room for approval. He's so proud of that, the lady said. 
smiling at James. Though also for the life of me, I cannot understand why. I am the only fast in this room, cried a sentiment fish, still grinning away. <sighs> Unless you count the old green grasshopper over there, but he is long fast now. It's too old to be a fast anymore. The old green grasshopper turned his huge flat eyes off on the centipede and gave him a withering look. The young fellow said, speaking in a deep, slow, scornful voice, I've never been a fast in my life. I'm a musician. Here, here, said the ladybug. James, the centipede said, uh, your name is James, isn't it? Yes, well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvelous cause or certificate as me? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth uh, did you get to be like that? Very quickly, the scientist said. Very, very quickly, indeed. Let me tell you what happened. I was messing about the garden under this old fish tree and suddenly at the fine little green thing came wriggling past my nose and bright green it was and it's totally beautiful and it looked like some kind of a tiny stone or crystal oh but i know what that was cried james that happened to me too said the ladybug and me miss fida says of miss there were uh, little green things everywhere. It's the soil was full of them. Actually, swallow one. The earth swarms and declared proudly. Who did I? The ladybug said. I swallowed sweet. The infant cried. But who's telling this story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late to tell stories now. The old green grass of forest announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refused to sleep in my food, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? I think I've done about twenty or so far, James told him. Then, the leaves to eighty to go, the centipede said. Twenty to not eighty, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying uh, again. Uh, the centipede lowered with the laughter. Stop fooling the earthworm's leg, the ladybug said. They sent the centipede into his tracks, fooling his leg. Uh, he cried, this wriggling uh, with the glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I fooling? You tell me that. James decided that he rather like a centipede. He was obviously a rascal. But what a change it was to hear somebody laughing once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spike laughing aloud in all the time he had been with them. We really must to get some sleep. And the old green grass of said, we've got a tough day ahead of us tomorrow, so uh, would you be kind enough to Miss Fire to make the bed? A few minutes later, Miss Fires that had made the first bed, it was hanging from the ceiling, suspended by a loop of thread at either end, so that actually looked more like a hammock than a bed. But it was a magnificent affair, and the stuff that it was made of shimmered like a silk in the daylight. Um, I do hope to you will find it comfortable, Miss Fyder said to the old green grass of her. I made it as so silky as I possibly could. I spread it with the gross of myrrh, that's much better quality thread than the one I use for my own wear. Oh, thank you so much, my dear lady, the old green grass of her said, climbing into the hammock. And, um, this is just what I needed, it's good night, everybody good night. Then Mrs. Spider spun the next hammer and the ladybug got him. After that, she spun a long one for the centipede, 
and an even longer one to for the last one. And how do you not like your bed? She said, James, when it came to his tongue, hard or soft. I like it soft. Thank you very much, James answered. For goodness sake, I'll stop staring around the room and get on with my boots. As I said, we said, you are talking about chapter 12. Um, Sleeping time. The big insect mm, told James how they became bigger. Now they were around. They were no more insects. They were around. The the fish tree and they ate crystal jewel like uh, small ones to which uh, James uh, um, scattered and after eating the jewel and the small one and they got bigger and bigger so and um, Spider, grasshopper, ladybug, centipede, and what all, including um, firefly. Uh, I'm going to read a chapter 13. Mm. So I read uh, some part of it, so maybe this is a little A few minutes later, Miss Spider had made a first bed. It was hanging from the ceiling, suspended by a loaf of thread at either, and so that actually it looked more like a hammock than a bed. But it was a magnificent affair, and a star that it was made of shimmered like silk in the pale light. I do hope you will find it comfortable. Miss Spider said to the old green grasshopper, I made it <coughs> as soft and silky as I possibly could. I spun it with a gossamer, that's much better quality, thread than the one I use. Oh, my own web. <coughs> Thank you so much, my dear lady, the old green grass of her said, um, climbing into the hammock. Oh, this is uh, just uh, what I needed. Good night, everybody. Good night. Then Miss Spider spun the next hammock and the lady was guarding. After that, she spun a long one for the centipede and an even longer one for the earth one. And how do you like your bed? She said to James when it came to his turn to her or so. I like soap. Thank you very much. James answered. For goodness shake. Stop staring around the rooms and get on with my boots. Santa Cruz said, you and I are never going to get any sleep at this rate. And kind of line them up neatly in pairs as you take them off. Don't just throw them over your shoulder. James walks away frantically on the centipede's boots. Each one had lace that had to be untied and loosened before he could fold off. And to make matters worse, all the laces were tied up in the most complicated knots. Uh, that had to be unpicked uh, with the uh, fingernails. It was just awful. It took about two hours, uh, and by the time James had food of the last food of all, and had lined them up in a row on the floor, twenty-one pairs altogether. The centipede was fast asleep. Wake up, centipede! Whispered James, uh, giving him a uh, gentle dig in the stomach. It's time for bed. Thank you, my dear child, the centipede said, opening his eyes, then he got down off 
uh, the sofa and ambled across the room and crawled into his uh, hammock. James got into his own uh, hammock, and oh, how soft and comfortable it was compared with the hard bed wall that his aunts had always uh, made him sleep upon at home. Right out, said the Stanford drowsily. Nothing happened. Turn our light. He called, raising his voice. James glanced around the rooms, wondering which of the others he might be talking to, but they were all asleep. The old green grasshopper was snoring loudly through his nose. The ladybug was making whistling noises as she breathed, and the earthworm was cold out like a spring at one end of his hammock, fidging and blowing through his open mouth. As for Miss Spider, she had made a lovely way for herself across the one corner of the room, and James could see her crouching right in the very center of it, mumbling softly in her dreams. I said, uh, turn out the light, shouted the centipede angrily. Are you talking to me? James asked him. Of course, I am not talking to you, you ass. The centipede answered, that crazy grown worm has gone to sleep with her right on. For the first time since entering the room, James glanced up at the ceiling, and there he saw a most extraordinary sight, something that looked like a giant fly without wings. It was at least uh, three feet long. Uh, was standing upside down upon its six legs in the middle of the ceiling, and the tail end of uh, this creature seemed to be literally on fire, a brilliant uh, greenish light as bright as uh, the brightest uh, electric boy was uh, shining out of his tails and lighting up the whole room. Is that a glow warm? Asked James, staring at the light. It doesn't look like a worm of any sort to me. Of course it's a grown worm. The centipede answered, and at least that's what she calls herself. Although actually you are quite right. She isn't really a worm at all. Grow worms are never worms. They are simply lady fireflies without wings. Uh, wake up, you lazy beast. But the grow worm didn't stir, so the centipede leaped out of the, his hammock and picked up one of his boots from the floor. Put out the rat's right, he shouted, holding the boot up at the ceiling. The grow worm slowly opened one eye and then stared at the centipede. There's no need to be lewd, she said coldly. Oh, in good time. Come on, come on, come on, shout the centipede. Oh, I'll put it out for you. Oh, hello, Jane, the grown, glow warm said, looking down and giving James a little wave and a smile. Still, I didn't see you coming. Welcome, my dear boy, welcome. Good night. Then creaked and out went right. James only trotted away. There in darkness, with his eyes wide open, listening to the strangest living noise that the creatures were making all around him, and wondering still what rust was going to happen to him. In the morning, a lot of he was beginning to like his new friends very much. Oh, they were not nearly as terrible as they looked. In fact, they weren't really terrible at all. They seemed extremely kind and helpful. In spite of all the shouting and arguing that went on between them. Good night, old green grasshopper, he whispered. Good night, Redbug. Good night, Miss Spider. But before he could go through them all, he had fallen past a sleeve. Talking about chapter 13. Mm, here you go. Um, this story is very enjoyable. Um, when the spider uh, made beds for old insect and for James, and then Santa Fe uh, 
um, was angry and then uh, and asked the the grow worm and firefly grow worm uh, put it out turn off the light and, and James uh, looked up uh, the ceiling and then there was a worm uh, which had a light uh, with the uh, end of the body and there's uh, um, green light and the firefly and didn't have wings but and uh, it could write the whole uh, inside uh, so and uh, the grow worm um, put the light out and they slept and chapter 14 we are off someone was shouting we are off at last and James woke up to with a jump and um, look about him the creatures were all out of their hammock and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly the floor gave a great heat as though an earthquake were taking place. Here we go, shout the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight! What's happening? cried James, leaping out of his hammock. So what's going on? The ladybug, who was obviously a kind or gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know it, and she said, we are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great big beautiful beach to Orlando, to Orlando. What? asked James. Never in mind, said the ladybug. Nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop, those two repulsive aunts of yours. Here, here, they all shouted. Here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybird went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hills, happens to be on a steep slope, and therefore the only thing that has been stopping this feature from rolling away right from the beginning is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem and off we go. Watch it, cried the Miss Spider, as the loon gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quiet, not quiet. At this moment, continued the ladybug, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as a razor's, as you up there on top of the feet and nibbling away at the stem. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we are lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over us to when we start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole on the ceiling and shouted, I've done it, we're off. We are off, the, the others cried, we are off. The journey begins, shouted the centipede. And who knows where it will end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybug. We are now about to visit most marvelous place and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There is no knowing what we shall see. Rise the centipede. We may see a creature with forty nine heads who lives in the desolate snow, and whenever he catches a cold which he dreads, he has forty nine noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink spotted scrunchy who can chew up a man with one bite. He likes to eat five of them slowed for lunch and eighteen for its supper at night. 
We may see a dragon, and nobody knows that we want to see a unicorn hit there. We may see a terrible monster with tools, and growing out of the top of his hair. We may see the sweet little beady right hand, so playful, so kind, and well bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just avoid them, and then they explode and they blow off your head. A uh, new and a uh, no seros, uh, surely you will see, and uh, <coughs> no more and uh, notable net and the hood thing when it sting you goes uh, in at the knee and then comes out uh, through the top of your head. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake, uh, tremors, or uh, nasty streets. We may even be tossed on the horns of a curious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, so let us bowl, let us plunge, and let us go rolling and bowling and spinning until we are away from old spiker and spongy. One second later, slowly, insidiously, or most gently, the great pitch started to lean forward and steer into motion. The whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybug and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworms, also the centipede, who had just come slithering quickly down the wall. Uh, talking about chapter 14 and the peachy was off. Um, it rolled down and then the insects were excited. Because uh, they um, were adventure, um, the future lower, lower down, and so what's happened? There you go. I'm going to lead the fifteen outside in the garden at. That very moment, Aunt Spongy and Aunt Spike had just taken their places at the pond gate, each with a bunch of tickets in her hand, and the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance, climbing up the hill to view the pitch. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spike was saying. Just look at all those people. I wonder what became of that horrid little boy of ours last night. And Sponge said he never did come back in, did he? He probably fell down in the dark and then broke his leg. And Spiker said, Oh, his neck, maybe. And Sponge said, Hopefully. Just wait till I get my hands on him. <laughs> and Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out right again by the time I've finished with him. Good gracious, miss, what's that awful noise? Both women swung round to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peachy crashing through the fence that surrounded it, and now, the gathering's to speed every second. He came rolling across the garden toward the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gaped. They screamed. They started to run. They panicked. They both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling, and each of them was thinking only about saving herself. And Spongy, the fat one, seemed trifle over a box that she'd brought around to keep the money in, 
and fell flat on her face, and Spike immediately tripped uh, over Aunt Spongy and came down on top of her. Um, they both lay on the ground, fighting and crawling and yelling and struggling frantically to get out again. But before they could do this, the mighty beach was upon them. There was a crunch, and then there was silence. The fish rolled on, and behind it, Unsponge and Spiker lay iron out upon the grass as flat, and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of the picture book. Wow. Very fun. Talking about chapter fifteen. The giant fish rolled down. Um and two and um that led it to open the display and they were excited uh, to get lots of money uh, in the early morning and the sightseeing and villagers uh, uh, came out um to and talk about James uh, because he didn't appear and uh, the whole of land uh, said that uh, they uh, hit James uh, because he didn't come uh, last night while they were talking they heard uh, um, lots of noise uh, from up there and uh, they saw the giant uh, beaches uh, rolling down It broke the pants, and it rolled down directly toward them. They were panic, and they yelled, and then uh, they ran away. But the giant fish was so fast. to uh, avoid it and so the last giant fish made them flat like uh, paper to and uh, died and the fish lore and Sixteen. And now the peach had broke out of the garden and was over the edge of the hill, rolling and bouncing down the steep slope at a terrific pace. Past them, past them, past the went, and the crowd of people who were climbing up the hill suddenly caught sight of this terrible monster flooding down upon them and they screamed scattered to right and left as it went hustling by. At the bottom of the hill it charged across the road, knocking over a telegraphole and flattening two parked automobiles as it went on by. 
Penn rushed madly across about twenty feet, breaking down all the fence and hedges in his path. It went right through the middle of her hollow to find Georgie cows, and then threw a flock of sheep, and then threw out the paddock full of horses, and then threw a yard full of feed, and soon the whole countryside was searching. Mass of fanic stricken animals stamped, stamped, stamped in, in all directions. The peach was still going at a tremendous speed with no sign of slowing down. About a mile farther on it came to a village. Down the main street of the village it roared, with people leaping frantically out of its path the right and left. And at the end of the street, it went crashing right through the wall, on an innermost building, and out the other side, is leaving two gaping round holes in the brick wall. This building happened to be a famous factory where um, they made chocolate, and almost at once, a great river of warm melting chocolates came flowing out of hole. In the factory wall, a minute later, this brown stick mass was flowing through the every street in the village, oozing on the doors of houses and into people's to shop and garden. Children were wading in it up and to their knee, and the some were even trying to swim in it, and all of them were sucking it into their mouths. Great greedy is the gods and shrinking to a joy. But the fish rushed on across the countryside on and on and on, receiving a threat of destruction in its way. Cows shared on the table with big ties and barns and bungalows and hair ricks. And anything that got in its way went toppling over like a nine pin. And an old man sitting quietly beside a stream at his fishing rod whisked out of his hand as he went dancing out, and a woman called Daisy with a whistle was standing so close to it as it passed that she had the skin taken off the tip of her long nose. Would it ever stop? Why should it? A round object will always keep on rolling as long as it is on a downward slope. And in this case, the land sloped down its old ways until it reached the ocean, the same ocean that James had begged his aunt to be allowed to visit the day before. Well, perhaps he was going to visit it now. The beach was rushing closer and closer to its every second, and closer also to the towering white cliff that came furthest. Easy cliffs are the most uh, famous in the whole of England, and they are hundreds of feet high, and below them the sea is uh, deep and cold and hungry. So many ships have been swallowed up and uh, lost further on this part of the coast, and all the men who were in them as well. So the fish was now only a hundred yards away. And from the cliff, now fifties, now twenties, now ten, now five, and when it reached the edge of the cliff, it seemed to leap up and into the sky, and hang there suspended for a few seconds, still turning over and over in its airs. Then it began to fall down, 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 smacked it, to hit the water with its crosser splash and sank like a stone. But a few seconds later, up it came again, and this time up it stayed, floating cylinderist up on the surface of the water. Is it going to ship or submarine? Anyway, it's a long journey over the giant pitch. Interesting. Chapter 16 Giant fish all down after killing two horrible ants. Um, uh, the 
people who wanted to watch the giant fish uh, and then ran away from the giant fish. They rolled down in the end then it reached to the white cliff of England, the seaside. And on the way um, to the sea, and it's quite far away, uh, it, um, the giant fish met and the uh, herds, like a uh, cow, sheep, or pig, some, uh, many animals, uh, stamplings, because uh, they ran away from the giant fish. They scared away, and giant fish is, um, broke the fences and it threw the villages and in the end uh, he passed through the brick factories uh, in which his um, chocolate was made. It made a hole uh, on the brick house uh, and in the brick house and so on the chocolate uh, uh, flew like a liver and then children like I think rolled out and uh, stuck to chocolate and he um, enjoyed writing about chocolate because uh, children like chocolate and anyways he wrote a uh, children books after then and maybe um, he wrote about uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and so Pablos. So um, yes, it um down down and then to reach the cliff and then uh, crush into the water. Anyway, um, the giant fish float on the sea and it looks like a ship and along the wires. I wonder if she will submarine. Well, yes, I think a ship and then maybe. Uh, insect and James uh, um, so the last uh, were in on the sea 17 at this moment the scene inside a pitch itself was one of indescribable chaos James and Henry Crocker were lying bruised and Battle on the floor, looms amongst a tangled mass of centrifuge and earth warm and spider, and lady block and glow warm and old green grass offer in the whole history of the world. No travelers had ever had us more terrible journeys than these unfortunate creatures. It has set our with much laughing and shouting and for the first few seconds as the fish had begun to low its load forward. Nobody had to mind it even trembled about a little bit, and when it went bump, and the Santa Fe had shouted, that was Aunt Sponsy. And then bump again, and there was Aunt Spiker. There had been a tremendous burst of cheering all around. But as soon as the fish rolled out of the garden and began to go down the steep hill, lusting and plunging and bounding madly downward, then the whole thing became a nightmare. James found himself being pulled on up against the ceiling, then back onto the floor, then sideways against the wall, then up onto the ceiling again, and up and down, and back and forth, and round and round. At the same time, all the other creatures were flying through the air in every direction, and so were the church and the sofa. Not to mention the forty-two boots belong to the sand field. Everything and all of them were uh, being led around like the fish inside an enormous rattle that was being rattled by a mad giant who refused to stop. To make it worse, something went wrong with the glow warmth writing system, and the room was in pitch darkness. There was scream, yells, and curses, and cries of pain. And everything kept going round and round, and once the James made us a frantic grab at some thick bars sticking out from the wall. On his vine, uh, there was a cover of a centipede with legs. Let go, you idiot, shouted him, a centipede kicking himself free. And James was promptly flung across the room into the old green grass hopper's honey wrap. 
flies he got tangled up in Miss Spider's leg or a whole business. And toward the end, a fool of worms who was cracking himself like a whip, and every time he flew through the air from one side of the loom to the other, he called himself around Jim's body in a panic and refused to unwind. Oh, it was a frantic and terrible trip. But it was uh, all about now, and the room was suddenly uh, very still and quiet. Everybody was begin, uh, beginning slowly and painfully to descend in girls himself from everybody else. Let's have uh, some right, and shouted the centipede. Yes, they cried, right. It was some right. I'm trying, as a poor girl one. I'm doing myself my best to please be patient. Mm -mm. They all wait in silence, then a faint greenish light began to grow out of the girl one's tail, and this gradually um, became stronger and stronger until it was anyways enough to see by. Some great journey, sent Fisher, uh, blimping across the room. I shall never be the same again, murmured Arthur. Nor I, the ladybug said, I take years of my life. Ah, oh, but, my dear friend, cried the old green grasshopper, trying to be cheerful. We are there. Where? they asked. Where? Where is there? I don't know, the old green grasshopper said, but I'll be bet it's somewhere good. Oh, where's probably at the bottom of the coal mine? The earthworm said, a groom mist. We suddenly went down and down and down. The very suddenly at the last moment, I felt it in my stomach, I still feel it. Perhaps we are in the middle of a beautiful country full of songs and music. They are all the green grasshopper said. Or oh, near the seashore, said James so eagerly. The last of other children down on the sand is for me to play with. Pardon me? Murmur ladybugs turning or trifle face, but am I wrong? And thinking that we seem to be bubbling up and down. Bubbling up and down? They cried as to what on earth do you mean? You will still get it from the journey. The old wing grasshopper told her, and you will get up it in a minute, and everybody let it to go upstairs and now and take a look around. Yes, uh, they called, and then come on, let's go. A few shows myself out of doors in my bare feet. The sentry said I have to get my boots on again first. For heaven's sake, let's not go through the old and nonsense again. The earth one said, let's all then. The sentry had to get it over with it. The ladybug said, come on. So they did all except Miss Spider, who set about weaving a long love letter that would reach from the floors up to a hole in the ceiling. The old green grass offers had wisely said that they must not risk going out of sight in trance when they didn't know where they were, and, but must first of all and go up onto the top of the pitch and had a, a look around. So, half an hour later, when the rope letters had been finished and hung, and the forty second boot had been raised neatly onto the centipede's forty second boot. Uh, they were all let it go out amidst uh, mounting excitement and a shout of the hill go and boys the promise ran I can't wait to see it. The whole company climbed up the ladder one by one and disappeared into dark choky tunnels in the ceiling and went swiftly almost vertically upward. Miss this paragraph I will read it <laughs> one more time. So half an hour later, when the rope letter had been finished hung and then 42nd foot had been laced written neatly, on 10th for 42nd foot they were all let go out. I missed the mounting um, a salmon and shouted, here we go boys, promised land, I can't wait to see the whole company climb up the ladder stone one by one and disappear into the dark so we turn on. And the ceiling is that went stiffly, so almost vertically upward. Um, chapter 17. Hmm. Yeah. What happened inside when the giant pitch rolled down?
from the garden to the sea. And insects were happy because uh, they uh, uh, get off, get off uh, from the peach tree and it slowed. Uh, and besides, uh, the giant peach killed two antis, sponge and spiker. So, um, they were happy too. But when the giant fish rolled down steep slope and it got faster and faster, can you imagine what's happening inside? Mm -hmm. The insect rolled down and then crashed and scared and dangling and yeah, something like that. Maybe um, normally, you know, like car accident, uh, all the insects and James uh, were killed with the heating biting and it's huge in, if, uh, impact. But uh, this is a story. Not a normal normal happen. We have got imaginative. Even the boy can fly like in Harry Potter. Anyway, <clears throat> so they last uh, they landed uh, and they uh, imagined where they were. So, and they um, decided to go out and then they uh, went out uh, through the tunnel where the James um, had uh, came, come in. 18. A minute later, they were out in the open, standing on the very top of the pitch. Near the stream, the balloon came, their eyes in the strong sunlight and the feeling of a surround. What happened? Where are we? But this is impossible, unbelievable, terrible. I told you, we're bobbing up and down, the ladybug said. We're in the middle of the sea, cried James. And indeed, they were strong current, and a high wind had carried the fish so quickly away from the shore that our late headland was out of sight. All around them lay the vast black ocean, deep and hungry, little waves were bubbling against the sides of fish. Now how did it happen? They cried. Where are the fish? Where are the woods? Where is England? Nobody, not even James, could understand how in the world a thing like this could have come about. Ladies and gentlemen, the old green grasshopper said, trying very hard to keep the fear and disappointment out of his voice. I'm afraid that we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. Awkward? cried the earthworm. My dear old grasshopper, we have finished it. Every one of us is about to perish. I may be blind, you know, but that much I can see quite clearly. Off with my boots, shouted the sentry. I cannot swim with my boots on. I can't swim at all, cried the label. Nor can I, well, the glow warm. Nor I, said the Miss Spider. None of us, three girls, can swim a single stroke. But you won't have to swim, said James Conley. We are floating beautifully, and sooner or later a ship is bound to come along and then pick us up. They all stared at him in amazement. Are you quite sure that we are not sinking? The ladybug asked. Of course, I am sure, answered James. Go and look for yourselves. And they all ran over the side of the fish and fell down at the water below. The boy is quite right, the old green grasshopper said. We are floating beautifully. Now we must all sit down and keep perfectly calm. Everything will be all right in the end. What well, absolute nonsense, cried the earthworms. Nothing is ever all right in the end then. Well, you know it, poor earthworms. The ladybug said, whispering in James' ear. He loves to make everything into a disaster. He hates it to be happy. It's only happy when he's grooming. Now, isn't that all? 
But then, I suppose just being an earthworm is enough to make a person pretty gloomy. Don't you agree? If this feature is not going to sing, earthworms was singing, and if we are not going to be drowned, then every one of us is going to starve to death instead. Do you realize that we haven't had a thing to eat since yesterday morning? By golly, he's right, cried the centipede. For once, the earthworm is right. Of course, I'm right, the earthworm said, and we are not likely to find anything around here either. We shall get thinner and thinner and thirtier and thirtier and we shall all die a slow and grisly death from starvation. I'm dying already. I am slowly shivering up for want of food. Personally, I would rather draw. <laughs> But good heavens, you must be blind, said Jane. You know the very well I'm blind, snapped the earthworm. There's no need to rub it in. I didn't mean that, said James quickly. I'm sorry, but can't you see that? See, it shout the poor earthworms. How can I see if I'm blind? James took a deep, slow breath. Can't you realize, he said patiently, that we have enough food here to last us for weeks and weeks. Where? Baker said. Where? Why, the fish, of course, our whole ship is made of food. Jumping yellow sapat. They cried. We never thought of that. My dear James, said the old green dress up, laying her front leg affectionately on James' shoulder. I don't know what we do do without you. You are so clever, ladies and gentlemen. We are saved again. We're not, we mostly certainly not, said the earthworm. You must be crazy, you can't eat this shit. And it's the only thing that is keeping us up. We shall starve if we don't, said the sentry. And we shall drown if we do, we do cried the earthworm. Oh dear, oh dear, said the old green grasshopper. Now we're worse off than before. Couldn't we just eat a little bit of it? Asked the spider. I'm so dreadfully hungry. You can eat all you want, James answered. It would take us weeks and weeks to make any sort of a tent in this enormous speech. Surely you can see that. Good heaven, he's heart again, cried the old green grasshopper, clapping his hands. It would take weeks and weeks, and of course it would, but let us not go making a lot of holes all over the deck. I think we'd better simply scoop it out, and of the tunnel stove there's be one that we've just come up by. An excellent idea, said a lady girl. What are you looking so worried about, earthworms? The centipede asked. What's the problem? Problem is your son said the problem is well the problem is that there is no problem. Um everyone um Was out laughing and cheer up, and at once they uh, decided to come and eat, and they uh, went and over to the tunnel's entrance and they began scooping out great chunks of juicy golden colored fish flesh. Marvelous, said the centipede, the stuffing it into his mouth. Delicious, said the old green grasshopper. Just fabulous, said the gold worm. Oh my, said the lady primly. What a heaven taste that she look up at James and then she smiled and James smiled back at her. They sat down on the bed deck together, both of them chewing away happily. You know, James, the lady book said it up until this moment. I've never in my life tasted anything except those tiny little green flies and live on those bushes. And they have the perfect delight of flavor, but this speech is uh, even better. It's an glorious Miss Spider said, coming over. Join them. Personally, I had always thought that big of juice coat in the wet and blue bottles was the finest dinner in the world until I tasted this. What a flavor. The sense of Christ try to feel there's nothing like it. And there never has been. And I sure the nose because I personally have tasted all the finest food in the world. Where I found the scent food with this mouth full of fish and with the juice running down all of his chins, suddenly burst in song. I had many friends that come to shoot this in my time. Chapter 18 <coughs> Insects and James uh, came up to near the stem.
<coughs> they look around they found and they were on the sea um insects worried about their life <coughs> because they have never lived in the ocean <coughs> insects belong to the land not the ocean so and um, they were hungry and worried about food first but James had an idea uh, because uh, uh, they were on the giant peach and they could eat peach juicy um, plush fruit and, and but um, earthworm were worried about uh, they were drowned if they ate uh, uh, peach but um, James said uh, uh, it's quite long times to eat um, to fish out they try some on and it was delicious and they enjoyed it. and then they ate uh, peach so and <coughs> what happened next I got a book in chapter 12, 19, oh, 19, there is a shark, oh, the picture is a shark, look, cried the scientific just as they were finishing their meal, look at that funny thing, black thing gliding through the water with there, they all swung around to look, there are two of them, said Miss Fire. Well, there are lots of them, said a ladybug. Why are they? asked the off worms, getting worried. They must be some kind of fish, said the old green grasshopper. Perhaps they have come along to say hello. They are sharks, cried the earth worms. I'll bet you anything you like that they are sharp, and they have come along to eat us up. What absolute rot, the Santa Fe said, but his voice seemed to suddenly to have become a little shaky. He wasn't laughing. I'm positive they are sharks, said the awful one. I doesn't know they are sharks. The show in actual fact is that everybody else that but they were too frightened to admit it. There were the short silence. They all fear down usually at the sharks who were cruising slowly long and long peach, just assuming that they are sharks. The scientists said that there still can possibly be any danger if we stay up here. But even as he spoke, one of those things, the black thing, suddenly changed his direction and came scurrying swiftly through the water so sort of light up to the side of the peach itself. The shark proposed and the stare of that accompanied through its small um, evil eyes. Go away, they shouted. Go away, you filthy beast. Slowly, almost lazily, the shark opened his mouth, which was big enough to have swallowed the uh, feral blood, and made a lunge at the fish. They all watched it gasped. And that was a dog. At a signal from the leader, all the other sharks came zooming in toward the fish and they clustered around it and began to attack it furiously. There must have been twenty or thirty of them at least, all pushing and fighting and lashing their tails and churning the water into a frost. Finding an pandemonium broke out immediately on top of the fish. Oh, we are finished now, cried Miss Fire. Wringing our feet. They made up a whole creepy and then there was nothing left for us to stand on that they are start on us. She's alright, shouted later. We're lost forever.
Oh, I don't want to be eaten way the dark ones, but they will take me first of all because I'm so fat and juice. I have the bones. He did nothing can do, escalate work and feeling shame. Surely you can think of a way out of this, something they were all looking at James. Think, Dragon Spider. Think, James, think. Come on, said the dead feeder. Come on, James, there must be something we can do. Their eyes waited there, upon him. Ten St. Joseph, particularly hopeful. Well, uh, what's going on? What's James going to do huh, for that? Chapter 19. Um, one of insects found uh, something grinding on the surface of the sea. Um, it was the fin. He found it. Look, and there was something grinding on and uh, the fin. Not one, but two. Uh, all insects uh, and change uh, took uh, look at it and then there were many many of them uh, some uh, grinding things and came uh, closer to the giant beach and also one shouted shark it's shark it must be shark and then they saw that shark and then Shark was very aggressive, and they were afraid of the shark. And they uh, worried about their life if shark um, attack, and they didn't uh, think they were alive. Um, when the leader shark uh, started attack, and then the other shark, and about the thirty sharks, and attacked, uh, start attacking. The giant fish. Um, so when uh, insects like spiders and um, glowworm ask James uh, to think uh, what they should do to escape uh, this uh, um, attack from uh, the shark. Chapter 20 There is something that I believe we might try, James uh, Henry Proto said slowly. I'm not saying uh, it will work. Oh, tell us, cried the other one. Tell us quick. We'll try anything you say, said the centipede. But hurry, hurry, hurry. Be quiet and uh, let the voice speak, said the lady. Well, go on, James. They all moved a little close to him, and there was a longish pause. Go on, they cried frantically, go on. And all the times while they were still waiting, they could hear the sharks thrusting around in the water. Below them, it was enough to make anyone frantic. Come on, James, the lady box said, coaxing him. Um, I am afraid it's no good at all, James murmured. Um, shaking his head. I'm terribly sorry I forgot. We don't have any strings. Um, we need hundreds of yards of string to make this work. What sort of string? asked the old green grass of first sharply. It's all just as strong as it's strong. My dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We've got all you want. How well? The silk worm cried. The old green grasshoppers. Did you ever know the silkworms? She's still downstairs. She never moves, and she just lies there sleeping all day long. But we can easily wake her up and then uh, make her spins. And what about me? May I ask, said Mrs. Spider. I can spin just as well as any silkworms. What's more, I can spin patterns. And make enough between you? asked James. 
as much as you want. And quickly, of course, of course, and would it be strong? The strongest there is, is as thick as your fingers, but why? What are you going to do? I'm going to lift these pe peaches clear out of the water, James announced firmly. You're mad, cried the Westworld. It's our only chance. The boy's crazy. He's joking. Go on, James, the lady looked at gently. How are you going to do it? Skyhawks. I suppose, jeered a centipede. Seagulls? James answered calmly. The place is full of them. Look up there. They all look upon and saw so a great mass of seagulls filling the round and round the sky. I'm going to take a long six string, James went on, and I'm going to loop on the end of it around a seagull's neck and then I'm going to tie the other end to the stem of the peach, and he pointed to the peach stems, which was standing up like a short thick mast in the middle of the deck. Then I'm going to get another seagull and do the same thing again, then another and another ridiculous, they shouted. Observed, Pafko, bold dash, madness. And the old green grasshopper said, how can a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up too into the air? All of us said was, it will take hundred thousand. There is no shortage of seagulls, James answered. Look for yourselves. We'll probably need four hundred, four hundred, five, six hundred, maybe even a thousand. I don't know. I shall simply go on hooking them up to the stems until we have enough to lift us. They'll be bound to lift us in the end. It's like balloons. You give someone enough the balloons to behold. I'm nearly enough, and then up he goes. And a seagull has a far more lifting power than a balloon. If only we have the time to do it. If only we are not sunk first by those awful sharks. You are absolutely off your head, said the earthworms. How on earth do you propose to get a loop of string on a seagull's neck? I suppose you're going to fly up there yourself and catch it? The boy's dotty, said a sensibility. Let him finish, said a lady boy. Go on, James, how will you do it? Wait, with bait. Bait? What sort of bait? Well, worm, of course, the seagulls love worms. And then, didn't you know that? And luckily for us, we have the, the biggest, fattest, finkest, juiciest us worm in the world. You can stop right there, the earthworm said sharply. That's quite enough. Go on, the other said, uh, beginning to grow interested. Go on, the seagulls have already spotted him. James continued. Uh, that's why they are so many of them circling around. And, but they daren't come down to get him while all the rest of us are standing here. This is what? Stop, cried the earthworm. Stop, stop, stop. I want to have it. I refuse. Be quiet, sir, Santa Fe. My own business, I like that. My dear ones, you are going to be eaten anyway, so what difference does it make whether it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it. Why don't we hear what the plan is first, said old green grasshopper. I don't give a hoot what the plan is, cried the earthworm. I'm not going to be packed to death by a bunch of seagulls. You'll be my cheer, said the centipede. I shall respect you for the rest of my life. So will I, said the Miss Spider, and your name will be in all the newspapers of Worms Gives Life to Save Friends, but he won't have to give his life, James told them. Now listen to me, this is what we do. Oh my god, and then, um, can you imagine Seagull's uh, pick up the giant peach? <laughs> oh, dark side, there is amazing. So, I'm going to add it from 11 to 20.